five years in terms of calendar years, but but basically uh, just uh, tons of work and and it's I think it's gone really quick actually. So there you go. Yeah, it, seems, it seems like just uh, just a, a flash. I mean, I, I can remember doing the the same sort of thing back in 1991. I mean, it, it's it's gone by really really quickly. The whole. Th the whole five years because I mean it was not like we were just like sitting sitting around you know by the pool I mean we've, we worked from, for like you know for those five years I think actually between the black album and 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 load we kind of got a little bit of an anchor at home you know okay we got a place to live you know <laughs> uh, found a girlfriend you know things now, that usual uh, people do sometimes huh? normal things normal things, yeah, yeah that we really don't know how to do, but uh, Lars and I have since gotten married, not to each other, but <laughs> <laughs> we've been married for 14 years. I mean, that's old news. But uh, <laughs> you know, we've, we found the right woman, you know, and uh, we, each of oh, us has got married. Here. Those, you got the yeah, ring. I got the ring. I actually just put it on for the, for the interview. <laughs> <laughs> for the wife to see Yeah. Right? yeah. yeah. We went in uh, April, the end of April of 95, mm -hmm. in uh, Sausalito, Sausalito, California, yeah. the record plant, um, which is pretty close to, really close to Lars's place, close to James, all, you know, within an hour of all of us, basically. Mm -hmm. That's the first time we've ever recorded at home. We've got to stay in our own beds at night and that kind of thing, up to up till now, you know, Denmark or Los Angeles, sure. wherever it happened. The idea was to do a double CD with all these songs. And we recorded all the drum tracks, and it ended up taking a really long time, and we just knew we wouldn't need any time schedules you know we'd be in the studio for a couple of years that's not what we want to do mm -hmm. we worked one notch lesser in terms of, of the stress level this is the first record we've ever made at home in san francisco and we kind of told ourselves that we would rather the record take you know two three months longer and we don't kill ourselves or each other doing it so um this has definitely been the least difficult record for us. I mean, it was difficult and, and, and so on, but it was the least difficult and the least stressed out record we've made. We went in with that idea of doing those 29 songs, right? That This task, can we do this double CD? Get six months in, do those drum tracks. Kirk told me that you recorded drum tracks back in 95. Or, <laughs> and yeah. Part of the drum oh, track. I remember but, drum tracks, yes. Yeah. Look at each other, have kind of a team meeting and go, this is not, you know, going to work because we have to have that light up there to see, to go on tour and do all that thing. Mm -hmm. We want to get out in the summer, not miss the generation of listeners, let people know Metallica's alive and well and kicking. You know, we want to get it going again, get, get it flowing. So uh, that happened, decided those 14 songs, came back around, and we moved everything to New York on March 1st, the whole operation, to finish up with vocals and some guitar stuff and then the mastering. The material that we had, it, it basically kind of wrote itself. So a lot of the riffs, we weren't, we weren't so concerned about. Okay, here's a great riff, and now we're gonna put a bunch of other riffs around it and mm. construct the song certain ways. We just got some, some just straight ahead great riffs, and and built on just the one riff and kind of let other things happen around it. and I would take Kirk or whoever's riff, start jamming on it, and then other things would flow out of it. Instead of trying to put all these pieces of a puzzle together, right. the song kind of helped write itself. And in turn, they got their own feel. Uh, more, there's, there's definitely some greasier stuff on there. Sure. Some more hard edge picking. There's just different, more jamming feels to it all, I think.
when we, we sit down and, and, and make a Metallica record, there isn't a lot of criteria because we're so instinctive. <laughs> So is Reload a continuation of Load, uh, musically, spiritually? <laughs> Brilliant. Yes. Yes, it is. Me and James wrote about 30 songs, and we went in the studio and recorded 30 songs. So we actually didn't record one album while we were away. We actually basically recorded two albums. Uh, why have you decided to have this connection with the, these two albums? Usually you were doing right. so much different stuff from album to album, from ride right. to... Well, we wrote all these songs at one time. We wrote 30 songs. Uh, and we just didn't finish them all in time for Load to come out. Mm -hmm. So these are the rest of the songs. They're not, uh, they're not the crappier ones. They're not mm -hmm. the ones that were, eh. They're the ones that didn't get finished. So we want these songs to come out. And the only time we feel that they have some relevance we'll should be, be now. Today. Three years from now, the songs, you know, might not uh, fit us anymore. But the music is different than Load. It's heavier. Uh, we heard like six songs today. The music yeah. is more, uh, I would say, yeah, heavier, more moody. Okay. Uh, the load had more straightforward manner. Music. Yeah, I think so, I think so as well. Yeah, load was a lot more down the middle. Mm -hmm. There's there's a, it's a wider variety this time as well. Uh, big fat Black Sabbath type songs, uh, stripped down kind of folksy song. Uh, it's. I think it's it's uh, it's a pretty exciting record. I think mm -hmm. it's it's really fun to work on the songs right now. There certainly was a spirit back then that was a lot of fun, totally blinders on. We're just having a great time. We're just so committed to our music and nothing's gonna stop us taking to so many people as possible. I think the spirit of that has been maintained as much as it can be maintained when the numbers get to where they are. Uh, how would the old Metallica uh, stuff sound if you had the opportunity to record it today, you believe? That's a very... That's a, that's a question, question that but it, it, you'll never know. <laughs> and we will never know. We saw the new wave of British metal that was coming out. You knew it was going to hit like you know, a couple of years before, he was going to hit the States fairly soon, so, 
you know, we liked doing it, and you know, we were doing it down in LA, and a lot of people didn't know what, you know, what the hell was going on. Cliff Burton, the major rager on the four string motherfucker. <laughs> One step, we're like furthest out in like left field, pretty much from the middle of any of the sort of bigger heavy metal bands today. You know, sort of as unsafe as you can get. <laughs> and, um, and we get away with it. <laughs> the big difference is, is that we, we probably have more space to ourselves as, as far as like traveling is concerned. I mean, but I mean, we, we still have pretty much the same sort of attitude. I mean, it's us and the fans. It's just that we travel a little differently and uh, you know, we have a little nicer hotel room. The huge big winner. Yeah. Room service had a sandwich and a grapefruit, 38 bucks. Hey! I had a caviar a omelet. Sandwich and a grapefruit from across the road. I didn't get anything sandwich. and it cost me 40 bucks. Thank you, sir. But I mean, you know, there certainly is a, ro a, 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 a tendency to romanticize those days of, well, when we were first starting out and we were just like full on, just hungry musicians who, who were just bent on, on shoving our music down everyone's throats.